Hello everyone, welcome back, or welcome for the first time if you are new. My YouTube channel typically focuses on writing, body doubling, and cozy content. This month is Vlogoween, which means I'm trying to release a video every day, and we are almost halfway there. Unfortunately, today, I am sick, and as a result, I have lost my voice. So, I'm using a voice cloning software to help provide the voiceover for this video. Thank you so much for your patience and understanding. This video is mostly kitchen-related ASMR, though it was initially going to be a sort of essay on the importance of food as a love language. I'll still sprinkle some insights throughout. Please enjoy what I'm able to offer for now with my limited credits on this little voice cloning tool. So the idea for this video came to me toward the end of last month when I was becoming pretty situationally depressed. My nesting partner is currently deployed and my kid is living at home with their moms in another state. So for now, it's just me and the cats. It's been difficult to find a balance. Now at about three months in, I think I've had time to analyze my individual needs when living alone, and I'm learning how to meet those needs. It looks a lot like finding community, which was something I lacked in Las Vegas, and even in the magical land of New Mexico. I also require time outside and a good amount of exercise. I take a regular fitness class every week, sometimes three times per week, when I'm really struggling to motivate myself to do anything aside from lie around. When I was working as a barista, it was easy to find social interaction. But now that I am back to working from home, seeking out social time requires planning and willpower. I make myself leave my house even when I don't want to and go into town to visit my favorite cafes and tea houses. I've started to make friends with the other regular patrons there. I even took a weekly improv class for eight weeks. I am thinking of getting involved in the local theater, though I'm not trained in acting, so I'm not sure how to start. But this video is not about finding community, though I'll be sure to touch on that another time. It's about addressing the home life of someone, myself, living alone after spending the majority of their life living in shared spaces. I used to think I wanted to live alone. I've classically um, been difficult to live with. I'm not neurotypical, and as you've seen in my um, body doubling videos, I can be pretty dysfunctional and inconsistent when it comes to chores and self-care. I've, I've gotten better with age, but I tend to work best in environments where my family and I work together to accomplish tasks. Whoever has more energy at the time takes on more tasks. It's a sort of automatic thing, unspoken and generally effective. Whoever has little energy asks the others for help. The others help as they're able. Everyone contributes. But now it's just me, taking on all of the things all of the time. Renting a house requires one to be on top of things, cleaning, yard work, um, maintenance scheduling, communication with the landlord, pest control, all of it. Two people can do it. One person, one neurotypical, maybe, but not so much one me. One of the other things I generally forget about is the fact that I have a body that needs fuel and care. I forget to feed myself. In the past, my partners and housemates have loved to cook, and except in the case of my ex-husband, I didn't have to worry about remembering to make food and put it into my body. My housemates would bring me food, or even just their cooking would pull me from my hyper-focus back down into my body where I could realize, oh yeah, I'm hungry. I don't think I ever understood until now just how much I received that as a form of love, like as a love language. To this day, when he's not deployed, my partner will bring me food or make food and offer it to me, and I didn't realize how much that really means to me until I didn't have it anymore. In September, after basically subsisting on chips and whatever I could scrounge for a couple of months, I dreamt that he was home and that he made me breakfast. I woke up sobbing. I realized at that point that I have a need I've not been addressing. I need to take time each week to make something for myself. I'm not a bad cook, just an impatient, often inattentive one. Cooking takes time and focus, two things I've been historically bad at, dedicating to one long-term task at a time. So I've been breaking out my crock pot. I can put stuff in there overnight and wake up to the smell of something delicious. The first time I did it, I had forgotten I'd done it. I woke up thinking, oh wow, someone is cooking for me. And then I realized it was me. I had cooked for myself. I cherished every bite of that stew I made. You can also see in this video that I made banana bread. It actually didn't turn out well at all. I forgot the sugar, so it just tasted like salty bananas. 
but I'm inspired to try again once I'm well enough to go to the store and grab more bananas. So this video is about that. It's about food as a love language, food as a source of self-care. During a lot of my life, access to food was restricted, either due to money or abuse or whatever, and that really does a number on a person. It can be so restorative for people to have access to food. Everyone should have that. Food is often a big part of human culture, as are drinks. I am in such a privileged position to be able to purchase and cook food for myself, to be able to share a pot of tea with my friends at the local tea house, or to enjoy a pastry while I write at my local cafe. I'll be even more privileged when my partner returns home and makes a tasty meal for me simply because he wants to. But right now there are people all over the world with limited or even no access to food or culturally preferred food in their areas. There are things you can do to help. You can send food to families in Gaza through the UN's World Food Program and through the World Central Kitchen. The links to both of those are in the description below. Access to food is a human right that so many are unable to access right now. We all need to do our part to make sure everyone we know and everyone we don't has access to good, culturally preferred foods, period. Food brings life, it fosters community. So, where words fail, let food be the language of our love.
It smells so good. She's ready. Hmm. Fantastic. Amazing. I cannot wait to eat this bread. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm too excited. I'm too excited about the bread. I'm here. Delicious. Thank you. 